Hello, I decided finally to watch Dante's long grease pencil course and to make a short about anything I didn't know before. I ended up 1. Expanding some briefly mentioned tips, 2. Adding my own tips, and 3. Updating information for the latest Blender versions. Here's the second compilation containing 20 episodes packed with beginner to advanced tips from the long series I named Grease Pencil Stuff I Was Too Lazy To Learn. 21. The settings under these two menus decide the plane on which your strokes are drawn. You can visualize it by enabling canvas under overlays. If you choose origin to place your strokes, the canvas placement will be based on the grease pencil object's location and rotation. If you rotate, move or scale your object, the canvas and even stroke size will adapt to that. That applies even if you choose 3D cursor for stroke placement. Even if you place the cursor far from your origin, front, side and top will always be relative to your object's rotation. 22. If you choose the 3D cursor under the drawing plane orientation menu, then place the cursor using Ctrl plus the right mouse button, the drawing canvas will always face you wherever the view you are in. That means that you are not only changing the 3D cursor's location but also its orientation. Let's hit N in viewport and open the view tab. Let's rotate the view a bit and place the cursor. See here how the cursor's rotation is changing. 23. When you use color attributes, previously vertex colors, you can under the stroke menu randomize the hue, saturation and darkness of your colors. By default they are randomized for every vertex which looks weird. You can increase the simplify value to lower the vertex count and get smoother colors. If this destroys your drawing, add in a subdivide modifier may fix it. There's also an option to randomize per stroke instead of per vertex. Now no more need to simplify. Learn more in the Sophie Gentak video. 24. The guides, if enabled, constrain your strokes to allow drawing perfect lines or arcs. Circular mode draws arcs or circles with the 3D cursor at chosen point or an object like an empty in the center. Radial mode draws rays pointing to or out of your chosen center point. Parallel draws parallel lines at the angle you choose. Grid draws vertical and horizontal lines. Isometric draws lines at opposite angles plus vertical lines. Drawing vertical lines with this mode can be unpredictable, it's better to switch to grid mode to draw them. Snapping combined with spacing draws lines at regular distances. Twenty-five. When drawing with one of the single line tools, pressing E will extend the line with another line of the same type. Draw and adjust your line, press E, draw and adjust again and so on. If you do right click you lose the last line you drew, if you press escape you will lose everything, so be careful with that. Now if you go to edit mode you see that your drawing is made of one single stroke. 26. You can change the subdivision's number of a circle before drawing it here. After drawing it, you can still change it by turning the mouse wheel. Check the number changing in the status bar. If you lower it enough, you can turn your circle to a pentagon or a triangle. The mouse wheel works with the square and line tools too, although the change is not visible in straight lines. 27. Masking deserves its own short as a very important but hard to understand tool. If you have a woman in one layer and a mirror in another one and you want the woman visible only inside the mirror, you will want to hide parts of her using the mirror layer as a mask. The tricky part is that you enable use mask in the woman layer, then under the mask section add your mask layer that is the mirror. Now we can move the woman inside the mirror. We can invert the mask using this button. Even if we lower the mirror opacity to zero, it will still act as a mask. 
And if we move it on top of the woman with some transparency, we get this cool glass effect. 28. Edit mode selection shortcuts. Select mode number 3 selects points of a stroke before they cross another stroke. Very useful to delete excess strokes. Shift G selects points with the same layer or material of the points already selected. L selects linked, meaning the whole of the strokes that contain the points already selected. Selecting a material in the Materials panel and pressing Select selects all strokes with that material, and Deselect obviously does the opposite. Locking a material just like locking a layer prevents you from selecting it. 29. More Edit Mode Shortcuts M moves the stroke to another layer. Ctrl plus J joins all selected strokes. F closes open strokes. V splits selected points from the stroke containing them. Shift plus D duplicates selected points, and Shift plus R repeats the last action. Alt plus S changes stroke thickness. Shift plus F changes stroke opacity. Ctrl plus M mirrors a stroke if you press X or Z next, then enter. The last operation menu has more mirroring options. X dissolves or deletes points depending on what you choose in the menu that appears next. 30. I used curve editing a lot but never knew the V keyboard shortcut changed the handle type. This makes creating clouds so much easier by changing the type to free or vector and making the handles sharp. Increasing threshold lowers the fidelity to your original drawing but also makes it smoother and lowers the number of handles. Less handles means easier control. I found that a balance value is between 0.3 and 0.4. This setting is supposed to place corner or sharp handles according to the angle specified here, but I think it's best to just leave it alone. 31. Adaptive resolution, if enabled, will add points to the line between two handles based on its length. If you move the handles and the length changes, the mode will adapt and change the number of points. That's why when you disable curve editing, you find that the points of the stroke are evenly spaced. Adaptive resolution should be disabled if you want to interpolate strokes between two frames. This way strokes keep their points even after transforming them. Interpolation with adaptive resolution enabled can be disastrous. 32. You can extend a line in edit mode by selecting an edge point and using E on the keyboard. It's more useful if curve editing is enabled because it allows you to draw new curves. You can also extend multiple stroke points. You can resize with S to create perspective or even make the lines cross each other. If you don't want the stroke thickness to be resized, disable scale thickness under the stroke menu. 33. In the previous short, we saw how to make crossing lines using the extend method. Here's another one. Make a line in draw mode, select it in edit mode and do shift plus D to duplicate it. Without pressing enter, press R to rotate and type 30 for 30 degrees or any degree you want. Then hit enter. Now do shift plus R to repeat the last action. And here are your crossing lines. 34. If you have two strokes with the same material but you want to make changes in only one of them and they are in separate objects, just select your material and hit this number to make it unique. If they are in the same object, add a new material with the plus button, click on this icon to choose the same material, make it unique, very important. Then in edit mode, select one of your strokes and hit assign. 35. Proportional editing is like a sculpt tool inside edit mode. Enable it using this button or O in the keyboard. Select one vertex or more and when you transform it with G, S, R, etc., the vertices around it will be transformed too. 
These falloff modes decide the area of influence. Connected only makes it affect only strokes connected to the selected vertices. Project from view ignores depth when calculating falloff. We can visualize this if we select a vertex in the middle, go to a side view and try first with project from view disabled, then with it enabled. The first is like a cloth on top of a ball. The second is like a rippling flag. Thirty-six. Sometimes you draw on different planes by mistake and you need a fix, and sometimes you want to flatten a 3D drawing like this applied line art cube. The solution is reproject strokes in edit mode and the grease pencil clean up. Select your strokes and once you click reproject strokes you get this bunch of options. The one that makes best sense is reproject from view. Make sure you are in the correct view before you click on it. 37. Interpolation is a way to create animation between two frames if they have similar strokes, ideally with the exact number of points. It's better to use it for shape deformation animations and combine it with other methods for moving, rotating or scaling. For example, each layer has transform settings that can be animated. To interpolate one frame, use the interpolate tool in edit or draw mode. To animate everything between two frames, do Ctrl Shift E while the cursor is on the viewport or find interpolate sequence under the menus. 38. The fall of setting under multi-frame is like proportional editing we covered in short 35, but for multiple frames. We have these two bouncing men here, we can go to sculpt mode in the middle frame with all frames selected and sculpt the head to make it longer. Then enable fall off and do the same for the other man. See how the sculpt is more pronounced in the middle frames for the second guy. That's what this graph says. The sculpt is more pronounced for the frame the playhead is on, then there's a fall off. The sculpt affects the frames less the further they are from the playhead. 39. The best way to isolate a stroke for sculpting is the method used by Tuat. You enable stroke selection with this button, you select it with Alt plus the left mouse button and you start sculpting. You can also do Alt plus Shift plus the left mouse button to select multiple strokes. You can instead use the new auto masking options in Blender 3.5. Disable stroke select, enable stroke under auto masking and now only strokes under the cursor will be sculpted. Tuat's method is better because your cursor doesn't need to be on top of the stroke which gives you finer control. But auto masking offers many other possibilities, learn how to use it in this in-depth video. 40. You can invert the effect of some brushes in sculpt mode using these plus and minus buttons, or by pressing CTRL while sculpting. Some brushes have this brush menu to choose which aspect of the stroke they affect, position, opacity, thickness and UV rotation. This last affects strokes with type dots or squares with or without a texture. F resizes the brush and Shift plus F changes its strength. More brush settings exist under the Active Tool panel, the Cursor display and Fall Off that tweaks the area of influence. This is the end of the second shorts compilation. Leave a like and subscribe to be notified about the upcoming shorts. Watch the first compilation if you missed it. See you in the next video and peace.